Welcome to In the Know with the Bullioness. I'm Dawn Marie, a Silver Level Associate and Top Recruiter here at 7K Metal. And this morning, I'm here with my friend, A.G. Leverage, and we were discussing current affairs happening, and we thought these are some things that you really need to know. Today's date is Monday, September 23rd, 2019. Hey, A.J., welcome to the show. Dawn, good morning and happy Monday. How are you? I am great. I know your time is limited this morning, and we've got lots to cover, so let's get right to it. I was watching the news, and I heard that they're attempting to explain away the massive bell bonds buying, the massive bond buying as something actually good. What's your take on this? Don, I was watching MSNBC. They had a lady on there who was trying to say that these so, – so right now, first of all, the Fed is – is putting $75 billion per day from now through October the 10th into the central banks. That is called a bailout. Now, they, they're terming it something else. That is called quantitative easing, which means that they're printing money from thin air and giving it to the banks. Uh, it's interesting to me. Uh, I was watching, I was comparing the, the, the news this morning, how both CNBC and MSNBC and, and uh, CNN we're attempting to say that this is a good thing for everyone, that, that uh, this, is, this is a benefit to everyone. Now, they couldn't explain how it is that this is a good thing. They certainly didn't go into what takes place later. Um, these are, in fact, capital injections of money that are put into the banks. Uh, this is the Federal Reserve saving the banks. They're propping up the bond market to keep the rates suppressed. Now, the rates right now, we've seen the, uh, uh, the, the interest rate that the Fed charges the government is at 1.75 right now from the last 0.25 interest rate that was dropped last week. Uh, both our president and the Fed have admitted that we're headed towards zero interest rate. So what does that mean for all of us? It means that we really want to seek a dollar alternative because the dollars are proving by the day by doing this, as, as, they, as they continue to print from, th- from thin air, they're proving that the dollar is nothing but an unbacked liability and that the bank is doing, and, and well, in this case, the Fed is giving the banks money, feeding them liquid, so that they have this revolving credit that is, that is gone. The question begs, where did all the money go? Because the banks have been profiting for a, a lifetime as far as we're all concerned. So why is it they need a saving, savings now? Where did their original money go? So this is creating what, what, what is termed uh, an inflation debt bubble. Um, because what's happening is we, we're becoming a debt accumulation country, both at the bank and at the government level, because of this necessary expansion. Because if we don't continue giving cheap credit if we don't continue to allow that, then this idea begins to crumble under its own feet. So, um, so it's a little disconcerting, but I do have a positive note to add to that. But whenever you're ready, Don, if you had any further questions. So, Luli, um, I wanted to know a little bit about hyperinflation. Is there any positives around the hyperinflation? So... So we, in our lifetime, we have not been through something like hyperinflation. The world over, many, many countries have gone through it many times over. We have not. Uh, we tend to be a society that works, and we tend to cover the dollar, and we tend to work hard for our dollar. And in other countries, that isn't the case. People spend more time with their families. They spend more time making moments and memories. Here we really covet work because we covet what that work gives us, which is the dollar bill, and, the, and with that we go out and we spend money and, and, and uh, we consume. And it's true, our GDP is made up of 80% of our consumption, so the consumption is a necessary part of our American mechanism. Um, <clears throat> however, um, hyperinflation occurs when there's an overprinting of the fiat dollar for that particular country. So let's take Argentina, for example. Argentina uses a peso. Um, now, they go through hyperinflation once every 10 years. And let's pretend you ask me, so, so how do they fare? If they go through it every 10 years, how do they do? Well, 
the people who are unprepared, who are completely into the dollar, into their into their peso, uh, and everything denominated in the peso, they don't do well. They, they suffer quite a bit. Um, other people who are who prepared, and they're debt free as much as they can be, and they're into dollar alternatives such as gold and silver and even cryptocurrencies. They fare much better until things become better. And that's what I suggest for our American public to do, is to be prepared. So I'm not saying be fearful, and I'm certainly not saying believe everything that our mainstream media tells us, because it's, it is, it's troubling to me to hear them say everything is okay, printing all this money is a good thing. It isn't, and it doesn't have a good ending. And it disallows the American public from being informed and preparing as we should. Silver. Uh, silver was at uh, $17.80 this weekend. Last night it was at $18.27. And right now, because of what's occurring in the bond market, because of the world catching on to this news, it's at $18.72. This is at spot price. Um, I see that silver being able to move up. Certainly, uh, it'll be manipulated downward because they don't want everyone fleeing from, from, uh, from the dollar and from dollar-denominated assets. Um, and we're seeing the, the bond market correct. Um, but again, it's because of this massive injection of money. Um, what, what ends up happening, sorry, Don, if, I may, if I'm going on, cut me off. But, so the, the Federal Bank, I'm sorry, the Federal Reserve builds out the bank, and, and this frees up currency to the government, who then in turn is, is going to give it to us as the people. And they're going to give it to us in the form of free things in order to appease us. But that's going to take some time. It's going to take several months before that happens. In the meantime, the, the higher-ups between the Federal Reserve, the banks themselves, and the government will have this money for a few months before it finally gets to us. Um, likewise, the giant corporations will get a lot of this money in the form of a very cheap, very affordable debt, very affordable credit. So they, too, will have this parachute money um, and, and at least for the next few months, the people at the bottom, small business, middle business, middle class America, won't get anything. Um, so it sets up a unique circumstance for all of us to be aware of. What it means on a day-to-day -day basis is that we're sure to get some level of inflation out on the street that we're going to start to see, we're going to start to feel. And with that said, it all falls back to the same thing, ladies and gentlemen, which is be your own central bank. and back up your derivatives, your equities, which is anything that's paper or denominated in the paper, back it up with precious metals, gold or silver. And we were talking last night just about, you know, personal things um, as far as silver and gold goes. And um, you were just mentioning that this is the time. Any extra money that you have, um, consider putting it into gold and silver. You can always liquidate it later, but um, if things go south, you know, maybe up your up your percentage for a little bit of what you normally buy. Would that be true? This is the time, ladies and gentlemen, when we have silver at under twenty dollars per ounce to get as much silver as you can. This, it, there's there's no going wrong with that. If at some point it makes you uncomfortable, then trade it back in from the metals into the paper into the fiat. But because it's still at under twenty dollars an ounce, it makes it incredible sense to do it now. If we're in England, we're paying 30 to $50 per ounce. Uh, if we're in Canada, New Zealand, Australia, Western Hemisphere, we're paying uh, about $30 an ounce plus. They have what's called a VAT, which is a tax on the precious metals. We have it here, but not to that degree, but we're going to have it. It's coming. It's an inevitability. The government is going to need money, and one of the ways it's going to do it, as, as soon as the American public wakes up to precious metals, is to tax the precious metals. So before that occurs, it doesn't make bad sense to get some precious metals. If someone has savings in paper, why not put some of that fiat and transfer it into metals and keep the same savings but in one's possession? It just, it just a, it, it's a no-brainer, definitely. And you were also mentioning not only should you put it into just assorted rounds, bullion, you know, one ounce, two ounce, one tenth ounce, that kind of thing, but also grab some uh, of the what we call is it junk? Um, Constitutional junk? silver. 
But yeah. The constitutional silver is, is what we definitely want to have. That's the quarters, the 50 cent pieces, and the dimes. Not the nickels, because the nickels had 25 to 35 percent, uh, 35 percent between 42 and 1945, and before that, 25 percent. So the nickels we'll put aside for now, but definitely dimes, quarters, and 50 cent pieces. They have 90 percent silver. If it's 1964 or before, that's an incredible way to accumulate weight in silver. They're a easily recognizable coin, and they do not tend to be counterfeited because it is an American currency, which uh, the liability per law uh, as a crime against the federal government for, for, for messing with American currency is great. So uh, there's not a lot of counterfeiting for a constitutional currency. So that makes incredible sense. Excellent. You know, um, as we close, I wanted just to get your um, way of doing this. So the current affairs sometimes can seem very scary. They could seem overwhelming, and the tendency would be just not to even hear it, to tune it out. And you have a wonderful way of being able to take the information, act on it, but without it being like paralyzing with you know still seeing and believing and knowing that the future is bright i have a beautiful vinyl wrapped car with a bright future picture on it and with gold and silver and i truly believe our future is bright so i just want to ask you how you are able to convert this information into your own belief system and be positive about it and without it gripping you some people hear this news and they they become so worried, and they, they worry about, oh, my God, there's a hyperinflation coming. What am I going to do? We don't want to worry. We want to act. Uh, again, I just pointed out how Argentina goes through hyperinflation every 10 years, and, I, and I, I went ahead and gave an example of how some people suffer because they do not prepare. All they do is they're hooked up to their television, and that's where they get all their information. Other people are very prepared, and they do just fine. They have their assets, their savings, their wealth in precious metals and cryptocurrencies outside of the bank system in Argentina and outside of anything denominated in the peso. I would suggest that we follow suit and we do the same thing. This isn't about worrying. This is about doing. Uh, Let us get out of debt as best as we can. Let us learn to buy those things we need, not those things we want. Um, You know, again... Uh, it, it's, it's a vigorous shake on all of us that reminds us the dollar is not God. Dollar is not holy. The dollar is not what we should we should pursue. We're always constantly talking about this costs us this much. I saved that much. I have a coupon for that. Everything is about money. We always talk solely about money. So this dollar-denominated illusion is going to get a massive shakeup. It isn't a bad thing because, if anything, it will revert us back to remind us that family, love, moments, memory, God, all these other things are significantly more meaningful than something physical, than something monetary. So I suggest, uh, out of just responsibility, that we get into precious metals, that we get out of debt as much as we can, and basically that we, we, we look for alternates to the dollar. Because the one thing we can bet on is that there are more bank delinquencies coming our way no matter what, and there are more bank bailouts coming our way no matter what. And I believe this $75 billion per day will seem like something trivial in the weeks and months to come because I believe significantly more dollar bills are going to be necessary to shoulder these banks. Excellent. And in uh, and in closing, again, uh, one final thought is where do you buy your bullion, your collector coins? Seven K Metals is a place to be, ladies and gentlemen. All you do is you you order it from your own website once you're a member. Become a club member because this way uh, you'll order in your pajamas and you're having coffee. And the next couple of days you'll get it in the mail via Federal Express. It is insured, so you will absolutely get it. Um, it saves you time and energy, and this is just a responsible, disciplined manner in which to save. And now we're in Canada and going into other countries come 2020. Very exciting. Mm-hmm. All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today. Do write your comments, your thoughts below in the comment field, and tell us your choice of this. What is your favorite thing to buy? Do you prefer bullion, collector coins, or the constitutional silver and gold, or silver? So 
until our next segment. Feel free, if you found that this information has been invaluable, do share it with others and do start stacking away as A.G. AG Leverage has told us. Thanks again, and we will talk to you soon on our next segment. Bye for now. Thank you.